Following the Civil War, the big question now facing the United States was how to put the country back together again after the Confederacy lost that put an end to the ideas of secession and we needed to build the country back, which is an era known as Reconstruction. And Reconstruction is the effort after the Civil War to reorganize the seceded states and bring them back into the Union. Both President Abraham Lincoln and the United States Congress had different plans for how Reconstruction should happen. As far as Texas during Reconstruction, Texas was doing better than the rest of the southern states. No major battles had been fought in Texas, so the land was not torn up uh, like it was in Virginia. Texas was not invaded by the Union Army. Still, Texas had major problems. The war left Texas with major debts. The state had run up a lot of money they owed. Those who had opposed secession were persecuted during the war, and they wanted revenge. And former Confederate soldiers returning home hated the Northerners and the Texas Unionists and weren't inclined to help uh, build everything back, put everything back together. So there were two presidential plans for Reconstruction. Abraham Lincoln's plan, also known as the 10% plan, and Lincoln believed that punishing the South would delay healing. So he wanted to bring the South back in as quickly and painlessly as possible. So under Lincoln's plan, he said when 10% of a state's voters took an oath of loyalty to the Union, then the state could return and have all the rights of being a state. Also, under Lincoln's 10% plan, anyone who took an oath of loyalty to the Union received a pardon for the treason committed when they seceded, and that person could then vote and return to a normal life. Well, when Abraham Lincoln is assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, Andrew Johnson, Lincoln's vice president, becomes president. And Johnson is going to mostly follow Lincoln's plan, but he's going to modify it a little bit. He's going to help set up a provisional government in every former Confederate state, and he's going to add three provisions to Lincoln's 10% plan for the Confederate states to return to the Union. The first provision said that each state had to nullify their act of secession. The second said that the states had to acknowledge that the federal government would not pay the state's debts. And then each state had to ratify the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which outlawed slavery. Also under Andrew Johnson's plan, a majority of white Southerners had to take an oath of loyalty to the United States to get to vote, to get to come back as a state, not just 10%. And under Johnson's plan, Confederate leaders and wealthy slave owners could not vote or hold office. So Reconstruction begins in Texas, uh, really on June 19, 1865, which is when Union forces led by General Gordon Granger landed in Galveston. Granger arrived, he read the Emancipation Proclamation and declared all slaves in Texas free, thus establishing the holiday of Juneteenth, which we still celebrate today on June 19th, is recognizing when slavery came to an end in Texas. Uh, many freedmen in Texas are going to move away from where they had lived because of the connection of those homes, those areas, to slavery. They had lived there because they were someone's property. They were humans kept as property, not treated as human beings, and so they're going to move away. And for these freedmen, which is the term used for the freed slaves, they have several goals, one of which is they need land. They need a way to make a living, to take care of their families, to get an education. The United States government is going to help with this. Congress is going to create an organization known as the Freedmen's Bureau to help former slaves. The Freedmen's Bureau was part of the War Department, and it would provide medicine and clothes, uh, tools, food, things like that to former slaves, to freed slaves. Uh, one of the famous slogans you hear is 40 acres and a mule that confiscated land that the army had taken away. They would give out to some slaves. There was not a lot of land to go around. But the biggest impact the Freedmen's Bureau is going to have, especially in Texas, is that they will establish schools. So during the late 1800s, the majority of African Americans educated in Texas will be educated in a Freedmen's Bureau school. Well, what's going to happen in Texas 
Andrew J. Hamilton, who had opposed secession, is going to be appointed governor by President Andrew Johnson to help organize the Texas uh, Reconstruction government, to help work Texas through Reconstruction. Well, the Confederates in Texas worked with Hamilton because Hamilton was opposed to giving rights to African Americans. Hamilton said African Americans, former slaves, should have no rights. They shouldn't get to vote or be citizens. And the con former Confederates liked that, so they're going to work with Andrew J. Hamilton. And Hamilton is going to call for a convention to write a new state constitution. The convention will meet in February of 1866. Nearly all of the delegates at this constitutional convention had supported secession and the Confederacy. And so they're going to be influenced by that uh, former support. Uh, many had even been high-ranking military officers and had not even been pardoned yet by the president so that they were still technically uh, guilty of treason. And no African Americans were allowed to come to the state convention of 1866. So the delegates are going to meet, and they're going to take the Constitution Texas had before the Civil War. They're going to amend it. They're going to change it a little bit. And it's going to become the Constitution of 1866, yet another new Constitution for Texas. Under the Constitution of 1866, the Texas government nullified secession. They also nullified the state's war debts, saying that that government no longer existed, so Texas wasn't going to pay any of the debt. They did abolish slavery because they had to under the U.S. Constitution, but they will not give African Americans equal rights. African Americans in Texas could not vote, could not hold public office, could not serve on juries, and could not testify in court. Uh, the voters in Texas are going to approve the Constitution, and they're going to elect a new state government, and this new state government is going to be dominated by ex-Confederate soldiers and leaders. James W. Throckmorton will be elected governor of Texas. He was a former Confederate general. Uh, the Texas legislature also will refuse to ratify the 13th Amendment, which ended slavery, and the 14th Amendment, which granted former slaves citizenship and protected the rights of citizens. The Texas legislature refused to ratify both of these amendments to the U.S. Constitution. And instead, Texas, along with other states in the South, are going to pass laws which fall under this broad heading that we refer to as black codes. These were laws that legally took away the rights of freed people that worked to keep African Americans, even though they couldn't be legally owned as slaves anymore, but to force African Americans into a position of servitude to whites in Texas. And so Texas is going to pass a lot of these black codes. Well, following all of these changes, the United States Congress is going to take control over Reconstruction because they feel that the country, the South, is moving back too much to the way it was before the Civil War. Congress is going to argue that only they had the power to readmit the Southern states under the Constitution, not the President. Um, there's going to become protests in the North that are going to grow uh, as everywhere in the South, former Confederates return to power and little change has taken place. So Northerners are saying, wait a minute, why did we fight and die to allow the same people to have power and be in charge in the South? A group is going to take over known as the Radical Republicans. This is a group, these are members of Congress who wanted to reshape the South in the North's image and also wanted to support African-American rights. They pushed for African-Americans getting to vote, hold office, economic rights, uh, things like that is what the Radical Republicans are going to push for. Andrew Johnson does not like the Radical Republicans. Andrew Johnson is not a very good president. He doesn't get along with other people. He is going to fight with them. He's going to oppose their bills. Congress will pass the Civil Rights Act of 1866 to protect African Americans from the black codes and from violence that they were receiving in the South. Andrew Johnson will veto it and Congress will override his veto, putting the Civil Rights Act of 1866, our first Civil Rights Act in American history, into effect. Another bill Congress will pass is the Tenure of Office Act. This act said that if Congress had to approve a presidential appointment, 
then only Congress could remove that person. When the president appoints a person to hold a office, that Congress then has to confer and approve that appointment. So the tenure of office said once they approve somebody, only they can remove them. The president can't remove them. This is going to be tested by Edwin M. Stanton, the Secretary of War for the United States. Stanton had been Secretary of War under Abraham Lincoln. He stayed on as Secretary of War under Andrew Johnson. Johnson and Stanton don't get along. They're going to argue uh, and fight a lot in the papers. Stanton supports the Radical Republicans. Johnson does not. And eventually Johnson gets angry and he fires Secretary of War Edwin M. Stanton. Congress will say that Johnson now has violated the Tenure of Office Act as well as several other acts, and they will impeach Andrew Johnson. He's our first president impeached. Under impeachment, the House of Representatives will bring charges against the president saying that he has violated these elements of the law, these elements of the Constitution. Uh, Johnson, the House of Representatives does that. They vote, and they vote yes to impeach Andrew Johnson. Then he is sent to the Senate where the Senate will have a trial to see if Andrew Johnson should be removed for off, from office for violating those acts in the Constitution. And when the Senate votes, Andrew Johnson will be saved from being removed from office by one vote. But he realizes that he's not going to get his presidential or his party's nomination in 1868. He doesn't have the support of his party. So Andrew Johnson is just going to be a lame duck and he's going to finish out his turn, term. When the 1868 election rolls around, the Republicans will run Ulysses S. Grant, the former uh, war hero from the Civil War, the Union general who defeated Robert E. Lee in the South. Grant will run for president and Grant is not a very a strong president. He's just going to do whatever the radical Republicans tell him. And so this gives the radical Republicans in Congress the power. As a result, we now have what's known as Congressional Reconstruction, sometimes known as Radical Reconstruction. And under Congressional Reconstruction, it's a much harsher plan than the plan that Lincoln and Johnson had. And the radical Republicans did not like the South. They did not like it that the South brought back most of the racist policies from before the war. So under Congressional Reconstruction in March of 1867, Congress declared all existing Southern governments illegal and put all states back into Reconstruction. Congressional Reconstruction then divided the South up into five military districts with a general in charge of each district. Under this plan, under the Congressional Reconstruction plan, that each state, you had to have a majority of voters in a state take an oath of loyalty to the Union in order to elect their own state government. In order to hold office or vote, a person in that state had to take what they called an ironclad oath, saying that the person never did anything to help the Confederacy. So it's going to give make the voters and the politicians, the people that hold office, directly connected to the Radical Republicans and the Northern ideas. It's going to keep all of the former Confederates out of office and not keep them from voting. The states had to ratify the 14th Amendment, which again gave citizenship to former slaves. The states also had to ratify the third Reconstruction Amendment, known as it's the 15th Amendment, that gave the right to vote to African-American men. So states had to guarantee the right to vote for African-American men. And all of the states had to repeal their black codes. They had to get rid of the laws that targeted African-Americans. So under military reconstruction in Texas, General Charles Griffin was put in charge of Texas, and he's going to use the Army and the Freedmen's Bureau to register African-American men to vote. Uh, he's going to remove thousands of former white Confederate officers from the voting rolls, uh, and not just officers, but former Confederates from the voting rolls. Governor Throckmorton is going to be removed from office, as will hundreds of other government officials who had served in the Confederacy during the Civil War. And General Griffin will replace these men with Republicans, who will now be the governor and run Texas politics. Uh, African Americans in Texas will finally be able to exercise their rights as citizens. By 1868, 50,000 African American men in Texas had been registered to vote. Uh, several African American men were elected to the Texas government, 
uh, as well as nationally, we'll see African-American men elected to the House of Representatives and a, a couple to the Senate, the U.S. Senate, during the Reconstruction era. Southerners, though, white Southerners will respond to this by forming a lot of secret societies, uh, using violence to intimidate African Americans to keep them from voting. Uh, the most famous of these secretive societies is the Ku Klux Klan, uh, which will be throughout this, the entire South, including Texas, and again is a white supremacy group that will use violence to keep African Americans from exercising their rights. Uh, violence, either the threat of violence or actual going as far as murdering African Americans if they try to vote to open shops, open businesses, things like that, uh, that the Ku Klux Klan will eventually have the United States government declare it a, uh, because it's become so violent, to try to put it down. Uh, others we see, uh, people from the North will move to the South. You'll have Southerners that will work with the radical Republicans. Two terms you hear for these a lot, it's seen as a derogatory term by Southerners, is carpetbaggers or people who will move from the north to the south to make money off of the south. Their name comes from the type of luggage, a carpet bag that they carried. And southerners who cooperated with the Republicans were known as scalawags. So now with Congressional Reconstruction, the Texas State Constitution of 1866 is no longer valid. So Texas has to write a new constitution and they will hold a convention again in 1868, and this one will be known as the Constitution of 1869. Under the Constitution of 1869, no one could be prevented from voting based on race or color. A freedman had the rights to hold office and to go to school, and the con Constitution of 1869 strengthened public schools. It gave power of the governor and uh, protected public lands, and so the governor's power was strengthened. Edmund J. Davis, a radical Republican, is going to be elected governor. Texas will ratify the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the U.S. Constitution. And on March 30th, 1870, Texas will become a state again. Well, Reconstruction is going to continue throughout the United States until the election of 1876 is the event that brings about the end of Reconstruction. In the election, Rutherford B. Hayes is running for president for the Republicans versus Samuel Tilden for the Democrats. When the election is held, Samuel Tilden will get more popular vote. Also in the Electoral College, Tilden will win 184 Electoral College votes and Hayes will get 165 Electoral College votes. But at the time to get 51%, someone needed 185 Electoral College votes to win. So Tilden was one vote away, Hayes was 20 votes away. But three states still remained under Reconstruction, and these three states had a total of 20 votes unassigned. So both sides are going to claim that the other side cheated and that they should have the votes and have the presidency. Under the Constitution, when there's not, when someone doesn't receive a majority, it goes to the House of Representatives to choose, and the House of Representatives are going to be controlled by the radical Republicans and they're going to vote all 20 electoral college votes to Rutherford B. Hayes, saying that he wins the presidential election. He wins the presidency 185 to 184 in the electoral college. The Democrats don't agree with this. They don't like this and they will fight. Uh, they will hold it up and they will force the Republicans to cut a deal to get the presidency pushed through. This deal is known as the Compromise of 1877, and it makes 1877 the end of Reconstruction. Under the Compromise of 1877, the Republicans get the presidency. Hayes gets to be the president. And for the South, Reconstruction and all the restrictions imposed by Reconstruction are officially over. Uh, it's as if Reconstruction never happened. All the states are back in, all the limits on who could and who couldn't vote based off of their support for the Confederacy, are all gone, so everyone can hold office. Anyone uh, in the South who's white can vote. And the Republicans promise that they will not force the Democrats in the South to protect the rights of African Americans. So we see 
the Democrats, what are known as the Bourbon Redeemers sometimes, or Redeemer Democrats, are going to come to power, that these are Texas Democrats. It's all the same people who were in power before the Civil War started. It's former Confederates. It's uh, people who are opposed to African-American rights. And uh, not just in Texas, but all of the southern states, it's going to be the same way. And the North, the United States government, the Republicans are going to look the other way. They're going to ignore this racial prejudice against African-Americans. And as a result, Texas now, with Reconstruction over, is going to start an official policy of segregation in the state uh, that's going to last for the next roughly... Uh, 80 years or 60, 70 years in there. Um, but Reconstruction is now over. Texas is back. And Texas is going to shift now in a different direction now that the Civil War and Reconstruction have come to an end. Thank you.